Hey guys, today we're going to be going to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So, what we're going to be doing at the Monterey Bay Aquarium is basically we're going to look at all the sea creatures and stuff. And the most exciting part is that today I'm going to be scuba diving. So I'm going to try to get my parents to film me while I'm scuba diving. So, please enjoy and leave a like and subscribe. So we're going to the Monterey Aquarium. Very <laughs> right, now we're going in. That's a positive because we need to check in. This is what the aquarium looks like. So we're going inside. And look at this. There's a gift shop, auditorium, gift shop. Yeah. Some penguins, like the emperor penguins, stand at over four feet tall. That's about my height. <laughs> some penguins have awesome feather dudes, like the rock hoppers. Wow. And some penguins, my personal favorite, little fairy penguins, stand at over 12 inches tall. Very adorable. But our penguins are of the species called African penguins, because they're found in South Africa in Namibia. And it looks, once again, like they're a little hungry, so let's take a look if we can see anybody joining us on that right-hand side. You should be able to see our aviculture staff member Whoa. with that bucket filled with food and cat as well. Go ahead and wave hello to cat. Hi, cat. Excuse me, Velma. <laughs> we have our own little penguin greeting party in the front there. Yes, and now it's lunchtime, so we tend to feed them in the water these days. What Susan is doing is she's doing a broadcast feed with this food. And my new favorite feature of this exhibit, other than the birds themselves, is of the underwater camp. If you get a chance, take a look, because it's pretty fun when they swim by. Exactly. You can see how they're built for that water life. When you look at them up on land, and especially if you're looking at one of our penguins that is looking a little bit extra scruffy, they don't really seem like they're uh, they're built for that land, but that's because they're experts at swimming. Look at them underwater, chasing down their food. Out there in the wild, they've been clocked at 11 miles per hour. Yeah, that was wow. the fastest. Although, most, more often than not, they're not having to go that fast. Uh, but they're still much better in the water than I am, Eric. Exactly, and just to put it in perspective, Michael Phelps is swimming at about five miles per hour. I'm swimming at about six, so these penguins are almost <laughs> doubling my speed. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, today we are feeding them herring as well. So if you see the fish that's going in, I don't know if any of you are sardine or anchovy fans, but it's from the same general family, right, of small salty fish. Exactly, and it's some of the sustainable seafood we feed them here at the aquarium. It's not something that they're commonly getting down in South Africa. Actually, in South Africa, they're eating the cape anchovy, which is a very popular food with humans as well. Absolutely. 
I want to point out one of my favorite features in this exhibit area, guys. These birds are swimming by, and if you see them in the camps, you might notice that we can actually tell them apart. It's a little bit tough when you're just looking at them. Um, you know, they do look very similar, but the more you look at them, the more uh, differences you see. And we've made it really easy for you. We've actually given them name tags. Exactly. So every one of these penguins, we know whether they're male or female, and they have their own individual names. Now those wingbands are really easily visible when they're standing off to the side, but some of these penguins actually might not even have their wingbands on them. If you look right over Aloni there to your right hand side, currently is looking a little extra scruffy. That's uh, because he's going through his catastrophic molt. That means that he's losing all of his old feathers and growing a new set of feathers so that he can be nice and waterproof for the next year. But if you look at the picture there, that's what he normally looks like. And those spot patterns on his chest, those are the spot patterns that will be able to tell him apart from every other penguin in this exhibit. Yes, and that catastrophic mold that Eric is talking about, it's something that all birds go through. All birds lose feathers and grow them back. But most birds that we see that fly lose one or two feathers at a time, right? If a penguin were to do that, then they would lose what really keeps them nice and warm and waterproof. So even though this exhibit is not cold, these are African penguins, so their habitat and their temperatures are very similar to what we experience out there in the Monterey Bay. The water is pretty chilly. Anyone touch anything in our touch pools today? Yeah, did that feel like a hot tub? You want to keep your hand in there forever? No. It's pretty cold. Yeah, it's usually between 48 and 58 degrees. I think it's been on the higher end of that lately, so it's very balmy for us out in the Monterey Bay, but you're still going to want a wetsuit. Exactly, and these penguins are exactly built for that type of water. They're waterproof, and those feathers keep a nice insulation layer of air in between their feathers and their skin, meaning that they can stay in that water for a little bit longer than we can. But of course, they still need to grow new feathers, and so... Hey guys, um, I'm just going to show you a mini slideshow. So, I went scuba diving today, as I told you. So, um, here's me in my scuba diving suit with some of the volunteers from the aquarium. Um, yeah. So, this is me. Uh, we were, we were already done scuba diving because uh, my mom just took took pictures of me after I scuba dive so I'm sorry about that that's why my hair is wet and and all that so yeah I hope you enjoy the meeting slideshow and that is also it for the video so please leave a like and subscribe that is it